And I said, didn't you hear me? I said, this is what the witnesses are telling us. There were five witnesses, each witnessing a portion of this kidnapping. Well, he said, we're not going to call it a kidnapping. I said, well, what exactly are you going to call it? And he said, well, for the time being, a runaway. He's that age. And I I just could not believe what I was hearing. And it and took I don't me think I can, it no, took I can't months believe. to get that changed. Yeah, and I can't believe that. And I doubt if the people that uh, were giving you the information could believe the police did that. And I doubt whether the listeners can believe that these policemen would operate that way. Well, I and I know I even have former policemen that listen to my show, and I know they're thinking we wouldn't have done that. Now, here's exactly what you told them. You had the make of the car. You had eyewitnesses showing that he was abducted. You also had inf- maybe not. Did you have the information that of the stun gun yet, or did that come later? The stun gun came later. Okay, but you had enough information. The make of the car. You even had a credible witness, an attorney who now is a judge, who mm-hmm. saw this, ha- saw part of this kidnapping unfold. Yet the police did nothing. So continue. I mean, you must have put up some big stink at that point. Tell us how that day. Well, I, I did, and then I. Then when that cop left, we didn't see another policeman at our home until afternoon. And so I got on the phone right away and started calling fam- uh, family and friends all through the whole area, asking them to organize search parties and go to desolate areas, the state park, any place where people might go to a remote area to commit a crime or dump a body. So we started our own search teams before the cops ever came back to our home. While the police were gone, they um, did go to the witnesses' houses, but they didn't even so much as bring in a tablet or a clipboard with which to write down what the witnesses were saying. One of the mothers of one of the other paper boys called me and said, I can't believe this. The cop didn't even bring in a clipboard or a tablet to write anything my son said about what happened to Johnny. Nothing. yeah, it sounds like to me they're dragging their feet. Now, what? Just you know, it's obvi- We've talked about this before, but it's obvious that somebody must have told these police officers to stand down. And what have you found out since about the actions of? We're just going to talk about your local police force and t- name the police force and who the people were involved and what you found out. Okay, the police force was the West Des Moines Police Department. And the police chief was a man by the name of Orville Cooney. And he was the one calling the shots. He went out to one of the state parks where the searchers were. He was drunk. He got up on a picnic table and used a bullhorn and said to the people, everybody go home. This kid is nothing but a blankety-blank runaway. And he used the four-letter word. Okay. And the the reason I know this took place is because that group of searchers came back to our house, and there was 23 of them. They were very, very angry, and they came to our house and said, I thought you wanted our help. And I said, we do. And then they told me what the police chief did. And I, I couldn't believe that a police chief would sabotage a search effort for a child. Then the police what? chief came over to our home. And he told us not to talk to the media, not to talk to anyone, just stay in our house. Well, no one tells me to do anything like that when it comes to my child. Absolutely no one. I don't hear the word no when it comes to something like this. And I just pushed right on and did what I had to do. I called the press. I started making phone calls. We, I was proactive from that, you know, totally. I could see we weren't going to get any help from the police. Um, I kept asking them to call the FBI in. They would not do so. So we, I called the FBI office myself. They sent two agents over to the house. They both sat at the kitchen table slurping down coffee. And they said, well, we're not going to be entering the case because the police chief called us and told us he wasn't going to need our help because your son was just a runaway. And besides that, we have no crime. You have to prove to us that Johnny's life is in danger. You know, this went against everything that I ever thought about America. 
about how crimes were investigated, crimes against children, and what I thought and what I believed in was smashed to bits within hours. There was nothing left of a belief system because now it was in our hands. It was do it yourself or forget you ever had a child because nobody else was going to do it. And that's right. pure and simple. That's pure and simple. What happened in West Des Moines, Iowa? Many years later, I always suspected complicity because I didn't think they were that stupid. I just figured they were covering for someone, and it turned out I was right. We have since learned in, of involvement of somebody within that police department, and he is now dead. He, his heart attacked him, and he died. But. Um, that's what I suspected from day one. It was so a gnawing feeling. I can't explain it, but I knew this is not the way it's supposed to go. No, not the way it's supposed to go when you have uh -uh. credible eyewitnesses exactly. stating that the, they have IDs on the car, the make of the car, the people involved, Johnny's wagon sitting there, the dog running home probably. I mean, this is not a runaway. This is a situation where the police should have been on it within minutes and searching for that car, putting an all-points bulletin out, blocking the freeways. But what they did was they hit, someone was alerted at the top level, that police chief, it looks like. He then told everyone to stand down, giving these people who were working for somebody higher up the chance to get away. And as Jim right. Rostein will be with us in the second half hour to add some things. A yes, police Jim detective can fill in the blanks there. Right, who's researched this, said that's exactly what they need. They need a 48-hour window to get out of town. So in order that they can then, uh, uh, basically, once that window's gone, it's very difficult to trace what happened, correct? That's correct. And I will have to say, the police chief, when I would ask a question, he would tell me that it was none of my concern. Uh, if I pressed for a question. I'm a very calm person and very respectful of people. And when I would ask a question, if he didn't like it, he would begin yelling at me. And I would look at him each time and I would say, there is no need for you to raise your voice and yell. I have perfect hearing. Well, then the man would go ballistic. The man was not in control of himself whatsoever. And every time, by being calm, and just being real solid and steady, I could get him to go over the edge. And I knew he was hiding something. Exactly. Uh, so tell us how this progressed, you know, the days to follow, because you were, you were basically trying to awaken the authorities to what happened. They didn't help you. Tell us how this progressed in the early days okay. and how it basically eventually evolved into your fight alone almost and without, with the help of others from the private sector who've come to your rescue and how it led to him, your son you've never seen your son again until his late 30s and this is an amazing story but tell us those first few days what went on and how yeah. these policemen just didn't do their job no, they, they did not and um, FBI as well and I realized that uh, it was up to us and so I immediately started putting feelers out to find a private investigator. I did find one, interviewed him. He came on board, brought other investigators in to start canvassing the area to do all the interviews. The very first day on the job, the West Des Moines police arrested our private investigators. <laughs> that I never heard they before. That is they incredible. Took, they took them to jail, and they hadn't done anything wrong. But they said that they, they needed to um, clarify what they were actually doing here because it would frighten people. So they arrested our private investigators. Well, at that point, I was livid, and I went to the police department, and they were the men were carrying letters from me authorizing them to be investigating so that if neighbors had a question when they would knock on the door, they knew that this was part of this investigation and they were working for me. 